like I said, feel free, relax, get something to uh, drink, eat, um, if you can, and uh, we'll get started in just a couple of minutes, okay? And I see the recording has started, so uh, I'm going to give a, an official welcome to everyone here. I um, want to make sure you all can hear me okay. So I'm in the chat here, so please let me know if you can hear me and you can hear my voice well. So that, um, perfect, thank you uh, for that, whoever gave me the thumbs up. So we'll just give it a few minutes. I know being the first class, that people will, will come on as, as they can. Um, right now I'm on Eastern Standard Time, so it's 11 in the morning or just about 10.59. Um, like I said, we'll give it just a couple of minutes um, and then we'll get started. But uh, welcome to uh, this version of your MBA class in personal selling, okay? So like I said, just... Uh, Take a couple of deep breaths, breathe it in, breathe it out, relax, get whatever you need, and we will uh, be starting in just uh, a few moments. All right, well, I wanna honor everybody's time. So being that the, the clock has started um, officially, it is time to go. And those that join us in a few moments, well, they'll, they'll pick it up as they come on. Um, and those that won't, uh, we have a recording. So thank you, Sarah, for uh, chiming in and getting that recording going. So an official welcome. My name is Professor Todd Corbin. You can call me Professor Corbin. You can call me uh, Professor C, whatever is easiest for you. Some people call me Professor Todd. Um, I'm okay with any of those, um, or just simply Professor, um, but welcome. This is Selling Skills and Sales Operations. You can see the textbook that we will be using. Um, I don't know if anybody has started to read the book, but we'll get into chapter one next week. But I wanted just to show you, this is what it's about. There's 17 chapters in the book. We will start with chapter one next week and we will move along um, after that in sequence. Um, they laid out a really good structure to the course in terms of the, the presentation material. So I don't really need to jump around any, um, although I might make a few adjustments, small adjustments later on. Um, so wanted to give you an overview on the course. Um, for those of you that can see, um, you can kind of see this contents in uh, preview mode. Um, you can kind of see what some of the chapters are. Obviously, uh, the first half of the book is basically an introduction to what is selling. We get into some of the ethical and legal issues as well um, in selling, and there's quite a few. Um, may not be aware of, of some of those. Um, we'll talk about buying behavior. You know, I, I think most of us have, we know what it's like to be sold to. Maybe we've been to a store um, or a market or someplace where somebody is eager to make a sale um, and we are the buyer. And it's kind of nice to understand what it's like to be on that end too what's working for you, what turns you off as a buyer. So that is a really, really uh, important question um, to, to kind of grapple with as we, we move along. And you can kind of see that as, as we talk about, you know, relationship building, it, it's very appropriate for pretty much any um, area of life. If you're, if you're in a good relationship, if you talk kindly to somebody, if you're persuasive, but not um, 
to the point of obnoxious, um, you'll probably make a good connection with a person or a group of people if you're selling in a group. And so there's a lot to be said for that. Um, you can kind of see the word prospecting, which we will talk about. And prospecting is kind of this ability to, um, for those of you that are new to sales in particular, is trying to find who is your best customer. So it could be calling people on the phone, it could be uh, emails, it could be uh, doing videos, it could be knocking on doors one-on-one, -on -one. it could be where you're at a little fruit side stand in a market and you're showing your wares. Um, there's all ways to prospect for a business. We'll talk a lot about that because that's really important. Um, as we move along, you can kind of see here, um, there is a little bit on uh, making presentations and uh, making sales calls, which are, are really important, right? What does it look like to make a sales call? What does it look like in person? How do we do it on the phone? Um, what should we know about when we're doing that? Um, there's, a, there's an awful lot there. So getting a commitment, wow. Uh, every good salespeople, person, every salesperson wants to have a commitment. And a commitment not only is just they're going to buy from you, but maybe they're going to look at whatever it is you're showing them. And they'll agree to, okay, I'll take a look at this and I'll get back with you. Or, you know, there's many sales that take a long, long time. I will talk a little bit about my background in, in selling uh, when I tell you a little bit about myself. But sometimes a sale could take a year or two. Sometimes it could take 30 seconds. So within that range, um, there's an awful lot of what we'll call commitments that you can get and different kinds of commitments. And we'll, the book will explain that. And we'll talk a lot about that because that's really important. Um, and you can kind of see as, as we move along, um, you know, building partnerships, a little different, selling collaboratively in a group, um, long-term partnerships, what that might be. Um, you might have a person that is a customer of yours and you would want them to stay a loyal customer for years. Um, some people go out with the mindset that it's okay to just have a one and done. I'll, I'll sell you something and I'll be done with you. Um, and sometimes that's okay, but a lot of times that's not. And you want to build long-term relationships. So that is really important. And we'll talk about that. And then think about this. The last section in the book is really about the salesperson as a manager, managing things, managing We'll call it um, your time, organization skills. How do you keep track of your clients? How do you keep track of your what's going on in your company? Um, how do you follow up? So there's an awful lot of content in this course. I want to let you know it's going to be very practical information because we're really always selling. Um, we don't have to be in the selling and sales profession. We're always trying to get somebody to pay attention to us or pay attention to something we have or not pay attention to somebody else. That could be persuasion. So there's a lot of uh, really practical and useful information in this course. Even if you never get into being a salesperson, um, we're all... Um, you are all MBA students, and so you probably were experiencing um, what is it like to sell yourself? You want to be better at whatever it is you're doing. You're continuing your education, and one of the things that that allows you to do is be able to promote yourself in a better way because you have this ability to be more thoughtful about how you're going about communicating with the other person. And so this, this course, you'll find there's a lot about um, how do you communicate with others? So selling, I think, is also communicating. If there is another word in your, in, um, for this course, you could say this is a course on how to communicate effectively with others and how to communicate effectively with yourself. 
And that's what is the successful uh, salesperson does best of all. Okay, so we'll keep going. Um, this is probably not your first class on an MBA. Um, I know many of you are taking other classes, organizational behavior, entrepreneurship. You may have taken some other classes at some other universities. Um, and so these are not new, but maybe this is your first time online. So I want to give you a sense, how do you get the most out of this class? And how, how can you effectively make sure that you know, you're getting your money's worth, right? And so the first thing is, I want you to know, this is, I say, an action. Doing is an action, okay? Come to the class. Very easy. All of you that are already here, thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, these courses are always recorded because people work, people have lives, we're busy. And so they're always available in recording. And always, if you're here, you can always review the recording if there's something that uh, you don't find um, as, uh, as relatable and you can, you can do that. So I say, come to the 14 uh, classes. And again, at the very least, watch them on the recording. If this is your first introduction and you're looking at me on a recording at a later date, well, then you got the recording. So um, what I also want you to do is read, right? Read the chapters in the textbook. Um, next week, we will be covering chapter one. And there'll be other things to read. I will ask you to read some specific sections of the book more carefully. And I will ask you to maybe read um, an assignment, a role play or an article, I might perhaps add additional uh, insights from the sales world that are not in your book, because I want you to really understand what selling is and it is not, okay? So read. I also want you to know that in the Moodle site, you already have your PowerPoint slides and there will be other things as well on there. So obviously view if there are um, things to listen to, uh, make sure that you do, do those as well. All right. Complete. Complete the uh, quizzes, and we will have a very short quiz next week. Um, I'm not one of those professors that try to grill the students the first class. I want this to be a, a, a really good um sharing of information, but you haven't really covered any of the content. So I don't think it's fair to give you a quiz right now, uh, but next week we'll have a, uh, probably a 10 or 15 question um, quiz on the first chapter. So know that's coming, that will be entered in Moodle. Um, you should all have access to your Moodle site for the selling course um, take. So I want you to take notes, obviously just like any class, um, it's important to write down what's important to you. And sometimes I might not tell you what's most important. That's up to you to figure out. Other times you're gonna have to, you know, decide because you have your job and other things, um, a way to organize your notes so that you can get more out of the class because you don't have enough time. So take notes for this class or highlight some of those important things. Again, you'll have the PowerPoint slides, you'll have these lectures. So you'll have the resources you need to go through everything. The last thing I think is actually the most important, okay? I want you to give yourself permission. Um, that might be kind of funny word to hear, but it's important. Give yourself permission to actually enjoy this class. This is going to be, sure, it's, it's a business class, but it's very practical class. And I know some of you are newer students in MBA. Some of you have been around on this planet for a long time. And, you know, so give yourself the chance to be engaged in this class and to enjoy this class and ask questions, okay? So that's a little bit about the overview, what to get most out of the class. Um, want to show you this. This may not be new to you um, in terms of the grading, because that's important. I know every student is like, okay, 
How are we going to grade? How are we going to be um, evaluated here? And so just like most of the other courses at Windsor, you have specific criteria. Uh, everything is out of 300 points. And you will see the quizzes are 100 points. Now, I may not give 10 quizzes. I may give seven. Some might be 15 points. Some might be 10. Some might be a short five points. Um, but there'll be 100 points worth of quizzes. Um, assignments. There will be two assignments. One will be a, I'll call it um, a selling role play in a way. Um, you'll each have an opportunity to sell something, whether it is an, a product or a service. Um, and so that will be one of the assignments and you'll write up a little bit of summary about how to do that. And some of those will actually share uh, during the class, okay? Might not have time to have everybody share their role play, um, but at the very least, there'll be a written assignment that you can complete, um, okay? But part of uh, selling is communicating and part of communicating is working in a group setting like this. So hopefully, even if you're a little skittish and a little bit of maybe have some insecurities in speaking in front of a group, we will work on those skills as well for you. All right. Um, final exam, just like all your other classes, will be out of 100 points. And you combine all that, it's 300 points for the semester. Um, and you can kind of see if you know, the, the percentages of each, like quizzes are a third of your grade, okay? The assignments are a third of your grade. There's two, um, so each are technically a sixth. And your final exam, which you will have as a comprehensive on the entire uh, course, um, that's a third of your grade. You put all that together, 100%. Um, and I know in order to qualify for this particular course that you've uh, gotten at least 70% or higher. Um, and I think most of you, that should not be too difficult, all right? And we will make it so that you'll have a, some extra opportunities to pick up a few points with some additional extra credit uh, throughout the semester, okay? To make it a little bit e easier for you as well. Um, just have wanted to put this up for you. If for some reason, logistically, thank you. If there's anything that you have questions about as you go through um, this course or the other courses, or I, I saw some of the chat in the uh, WhatsApp group in terms of can't get on the, the connection or having trouble with Microsoft Teams. These are the people, these are the uh, email addresses. Um, of who to contact for what. Sometimes it's a question of your grade, getting it uploaded. We'll do that on, on our end, but sometimes you have a question, well, I don't see my grade or it's not correct. So these are important um, contact information. Again, it's all up, I think, on the website under your student um, section, but I wanted to make it clear for you that's where that's available. Um, all right, so I wanted to talk to you all about a possibility Okay, I'm doing this course on a Saturday. I know many of you have a course on Sunday and Monday as well, uh, Organizational Behavior and Entrepreneurship. And I wanted to talk to you about possibly changing the course day and maybe even the time. We could probably go a little bit earlier my time um, to potentially on Tuesdays um, and if or on Fridays. And if we make that change, it would be the following week. We would start, I have a class today, is Saturday, my time. We wouldn't go in, in three days time. We would wait a full week, a week from Tuesday um, or possibly Friday. So I want you to think about that, um, how that impacts your schedule. If we did a class on Tuesday or Friday, um, I would start an hour or two earlier than I have right now. So again, all the classes are recorded, um, but I wanna make sure that you have the potential to attend some of the classes. Some people have jobs, some people have families, um, and I wanna make sure that's okay. Um, 
before we make an, any official changes. So right now we're on Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, think about that. If this looks good to you and you and you're you you are capable of changing to Tuesdays, um, what that would do for those of you that are also taking organizational behavior and entrepreneurship, you'd still have three straight days of classes. I think that's probably the best case scenario if I were to change. But I could change to Fridays as well. So think about that. If that's something you can do right now, if you can switch to Tuesdays, maybe give me a thumbs up or put a note in the chat and say, yes, that is okay for me. Like I said, if we went to Tuesday, my time, it would probably be 9 a.m. And so wherever in the world you are, I don't know if there's some people in the United States, but there's people all over. Um, just kind of think about that, what time it is for you. Um, classes usually will be um, in the two to three hour range. Um, and one of the things that I would like to be able to do, um, certainly you all, all have an opportunity. Um, if you have to get up, something happens, you're at home, you have to use the bathroom, you know, obviously do what you need to do. I'll continue to teach, you have it on recording. Um, but I prefer not to take a full 30 minute break. Um, I prefer when I've taught these before, and I think students appreciate this, if I have two hours of material and the class is, you know, we can take a break after an hour, or would you prefer to go two straight hours? Again, if you need to stand up, that's fine. If you need to use the bathroom, if you need to attend to something for a few minutes, that's fine. Um, but maybe give me a thumbs up if you would be okay um, going two hours straight for a class. Just let me know that. Um, and that's something we can continue to talk. If everybody has to have a break, um, we'll talk about that. Um, so just looking at some of the weekend classes will not work. Some people say weekday classes will not work. Um, some people say Tuesday is good. All right, so we'll, we'll, uh, I'll evaluate that, but thank you. Actually, some people say Tuesday's better. A break is preferable. Okay, I think we're going to have a, a little bit of. Um, it, we have a we have quite a few uh, people enrolled in this class, so we might have a split decision. Um, some another Saturday is best. A break is preferable. Maybe what we'll do is is take a shorter break. Um, sometimes if we go longer. Uh, two hours or more, maybe we take 15 minutes in between. But I want to get you all again, I know we all have busy lives um, so that we can we can move along. And there might be, and, and what I might do if, if this is uh, um, possible, is that, you know, and I keep getting some people say Saturday is better, some people say either is fine. Um, but I think that um, if, if we stay with Saturday, I might switch a few of the days to Tuesday. And that way, because it seems like some people say Tuesdays are better. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll stay with Saturday for next week. Okay. So know that. Um, but I'm going to look through the chat and I'll make a good decision based on what's best for everyone. And like I said, if we could start, um, uh, the class a little bit earlier. That's probably not possible for me on Saturday. Um, I have another commitment earlier in the day. So if we stay with Saturday, this will be the time starting at 11 um, a.m. my time, um, because I do see somebody says Saturday earlier um, is a little bit better. All right. And so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what's uh, available. Like I said, but I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts there. So keep, keep letting me know in the chat. But it looks like uh, for today, because we're not only going to probably only go an hour, hour and a half, um, we won't even bother with a break today. But it looks like majority of people saying at least a 10 minutes break is, is good. So we'll, we'll, we'll work that in. Um, I got a, a vote for Friday here uh, as well. So, OK. All right, a little bit about me. Uh, your professor and my sales experience. 
So I want you to think about this. Um, you may not know all of the possibilities in sales. Maybe some of you have already been in sales. Maybe you already are. There are tremendous amounts of things that we can sell, products, services, consulting. And I want to give you an idea about, I've been in sales. Um, I've worked in sales for more than 25 years. So I started when I was four years old. Um, just kidding. Um, started when I was a little bit older, but uh, started out of college and had my first job in sales um, was the upper, it would be on your upper, perhaps upper left, the person that is finishing a hardwood floor. You may have not thought about this as a possible thing to sell, but I want you to think about this. Um, anybody have hardwood floors where they're living, your apartment, your home, maybe office, um, furniture, a tabletop. There are things that make the hardwood a little bit more durable. They're called coatings, coatings like paint, or in this case, they're a clear finish like a varnish or a, a urethane. So my first job was selling that product of coatings for hardwood floors. We also had some paints for furniture as well. Um, and it was really, it was an outside sales job. We'll talk about what that means because that job was, had a very large territory. I would drive to places. Sometimes I would fly to places. Um, and I would call on people, uh, mostly hardware stores and home centers, anybody that would sell a product like a finish. If you go and you're a homeowner, or your place of work, and they need to protect the hardwood floor, well, that would one be one area where an avenue for sales distribution. But I also worked, and we'll talk a little bit about this, with distributors. This is another type of sales. I have a product, and I sell my product to somebody else that has a lot of products that are similar to mine, and they go out and represent my product and sell it to their customers. So there's like a middleman. And it might be like a wholesaler. You can't kind of think about this from the standpoint of food. You know, we buy food at the market. Sometimes we go right to the market. Sometimes we go to the supermarket, the grocery store, right? Supply their products. So for me, I was selling many different, we'll call them channels. Um, of people. And also direct to consumer, we sold directly sometimes to people. So that was one of the first things I did. I did that for a couple of years. In the center, you'll see what looks like gates at a parking garage, another type of sale, another type of product. This is um, manufacturing. These are big systems. This is a sale that takes a long time, whereas a hardwood floor finish might be a a quick sale, uh, a couple of days or an hour. Uh, a parking system might take six months to sell. Think about all the building that's going on, any apartment, any office building, any place of business that has a gate for parking that has security. I had that role. So I was selling to different kinds of people. I was selling to the business owners, the building owners, the owners of the supermarket, the owners of the, the, uh, the office building. And my job would be to, especially with newer construction, to try to sell our um, security system. And you ever notice sometimes there's a card reader, right? You, the, it's uh, not staffed by a particular person, so it's automatic. So there's a lot of technical pieces with that. So I sold that for, for a while. Um, I also sold textbooks, like the textbook you're using, which is an online book, the selling book from McGraw-Hill. I worked for other publishing companies, and my role was to work with college professors and sell them the textbooks that I had. I also had content that I could sell them online, and I also could customize products, so there was a part of my sales job that was to take pieces and parts of one book, parts of some 
readings from another book and maybe perhaps parts of uh, content they created on their own and build a book for the students. And so I wasn't selling directly to the students. Those students were using my books. I was selling to the professors and the school administrators to use my textbook. So that's a different kind of sales. Um, I also want to share with you that you could not even have a product. You could have a service. So a lot of what I do right now and is I sell my service of training and consulting and coaching. So the bottom picture in the middle is me teaching a class to student athletes. And I'm teaching how to work with our minds and how to be a better um, with our mental skills in terms of how do you perform under pressure? What does it feel like when you're anxious? How do you move past any performance anxiety that you might have? Topics that are very appropriate for pretty much any area, um, but that's a service that I can provide. I also teach online. Beyond this, I have actual online courses that I have. So again, a product, but it's all digital. So think about that. Um, there's also other tangible products. You could be very creative, creative your own products, right? So what I did is I actually have a textbook I writ, wrote myself. It's a workbook. It is for student athletes, uh, mindfulness for student athletes. And again, it's how to reduce stress. Um, something I wrote with a friend of mine and that's available for sale. So for me, I can sell directly to a customer. I could sell, uh, we'll talk about this. I have partners. So I collaborate with people and I am have them not only sell my book, but they'll have me come in and do a training for their families, their athletes. And so you can kind of see from all this uh, on the top, on the, you also see I have a, a card deck, activity cards based on this book. So there's lots of, this book is also available online. So there's lots of possibilities for sales. And I want you to think about um, as we go through this course, because there's so many different things we could sell, products, services, consulting, ourselves. I could be selling the service for another person. That's not about me. A training that my friend does or my company does, which I actually did for a little while. I worked for um, a former colleague of mine, and she had a consulting service to work with university professors and their counselors on how to be better counselors in student success. And so my job was to sell her service to universities and colleges. So it wasn't even anything I created. It was somebody else's service and they did all the work. So again, I was kind of an intermediary kind of salesperson. So there's a lot of pieces and parts to sales and we'll get in on that, okay? Um, I always like to share a little bit about myself, fun facts, okay? So I don't know if anybody out there um, knows the Harry Potter stories. If you have kids, may have shared the stories with them. There's movies, but I just love the, uh, the whole JK Rowling series um, about Harry Potter. It's very creative. Uh, takes place in a school as well, obviously a school of magic. Um, but uh, I also love to travel and be outdoors a lot. And so one of the things that I have done is um, there's a picture of me. You could see a, a viaduct out there. Um, and that viaduct I'm standing is in Scotland. It's in the highlands of Scotland. And that was the inspiration when they used it for one of the Harry Potter movies. And when I was in England once, um, I visited the scene, the, uh, the set where they filmed the movies, and they put us in front of a green screen. And then I'm in one of their flying cars with my younger son. This was a couple of, a number of years ago. Um, but you can kind of see, I had to see it real life, what the inspiration was. Think about this, movies. Movies are a particular kind. They want us to buy a movie. You buy a subscription to Netflix, 
see something on Disney Plus, whatever it is that you're tuning to, um, think about that. We're consumers. So there's always somebody trying to sell something. Um, and we kind of know that. So we're part of both uh, parts of the sales cycle. Um, I've toured Italy. I've been around. You can see me loving nature. That's me in Hawaii. There's uh, a tree that is only in Hawaii. It's in one place in the world. It's called a rainbow eucalyptus tree. It's amazing. These trees are 300 feet, um, over 100 and a half meters high and uh, extremely uh, uh, beautiful. So that's me in front of one of those. All right. So the, the thing I want you to know about sales, and like I said, sales at the beginning is a lot about communication. All right. But I think in order to be effective in sales, because I want you by the end of this course, I want you to have a sense of having um, the, the ability when you're done with this course to be better at selling yourself, okay? To be better at representing who you are and what you've accomplished. You could be selling yourself in a job interview, right? And so I'm the product, me or you, and you're selling your services to want to work for a company. And so that is really important to be able to do that. And the information getting in this class will help you get there. But I think in order to be successful, in order to be able to communicate very well, selling and sales and life has a lot to do with self-awareness. Self-awareness is awareness about how we're feeling, what we're noticing. In fact, if anybody has read chapter one, they have a section in there talking about emotional intelligence in a selling book in the first chapter. And so what Castleberry, the author of the book, realizes is that this is exactly why sales is so important. Think about this. If you're aware of what's happening and you're on the receiving end of being sold to, you can tell. If you notice, you could tell when you're getting turned off by a person selling you something. If you're not aware, they might be trying to persuade you to buy something that you don't need. Okay, and you might not notice, I think we've all been there, right? We've probably bought clothes or something, maybe on the internet, we didn't really need, but it sounded amazing. Is that familiar to anybody? Um, and then we look in our closet, we look, we're like, why did I buy that? Okay, and so there's a lot of pieces and parts to move around in terms of if we're being sold to, or if we're selling, and a lot of times we're on both ends at the same time, think about, um, you have a job and you're interviewing for another job. So they're maybe selling you on the opportunity. You're selling them on you. So it's kind of a, a pathway both ways. Um, but self-awareness is really important. And that's about noticing what's happening as it's happening. Noticing what's happening in your mind about how you're feeling. Noticing what works, especially if you're a salesperson. Do you, do you know why you didn't make the sale? Do you know maybe it was the language you used? Maybe it was you were too pushy. Maybe you didn't ask enough questions, good questions. Maybe you assumed you knew what they wanted and you sold to that but didn't ask the right questions. So it's a lot about noticing what's worked and what hasn't, doing more of what works and less of what hasn't. That's self-awareness. And so we're going to have a, a really quick sharing um, about some of you that are on live, because I just want to get to know a little bit of you. You could put it in the chat, or if you're brave, you can be brave and uh, unmute yourself and uh, talk to the group as well. But I want you to have this idea about either share a fun fact about yourself, okay? Um, if you're in sales, tell us that. Um, but either, you know, obviously say who you are. Um, if you're in the chat, it already shows that. But, you know, maybe what country where you're at, um, a fun fact about yourself. Or I want to share this. What is a high and a low? Um, again, a high is something that is pleasant, makes you feel good. In the last week, 
Think about this. Something that happened that was pleasant in the last week. Anything. Okay. Maybe you took a walk outside and it was nice weather. Um, maybe you had a nice meal with a friend. Maybe you learned something new. So there's a lot of pleasant things that happen. It doesn't have to be a grand thing. Um, but we also have lows, unpleasant things, things that didn't work out. Maybe you got frustrated. Maybe you got annoyed at something. Um, maybe there was a lot of traffic driving somewhere. And that was a low. But the key is to notice how we're feeling about that. Is it really bothering us? And see, this is where the self-awareness is. If you're feeling irritable, if you're feeling annoyed, you're not the best person to be able to be sold to, or probably not the best person to sell if you're very annoyed, maybe annoyed at the customer, the potential customer that you're talking to. So it's not about being happy all the time. It's about noticing, okay, if I'm a little more irritable, what can I do to alleviate that a little bit so I can be more effective in communicating, building relationships, and selling? And so what I want to hear from you is this either high or low um, or a fun fact, a little bit about yourself. So I will start sharing with you uh, some of the fun facts. Um, but I'll share a high and a low about myself. And as you kind of think about what that might be for you. So sh think about this. So for a high today, um, I got to get up early and we have a lot of snow where I'm at. I don't know where you're at. You may not have ever seen snow, um, but it's very cold. Usually it's a high and a low for me. Sometimes I see snow. It's very cold outside for me. And so I have to walk through it with my dog. But also think about this. It was gorgeous. It was beautiful today, this white snow, and it was freshly fallen snow. The air was very clean. Everything was glistening off the snow. It was beautiful. So the same event, based on how I look at it, is a high and a low. And one of the things you'll notice is that in sales, it is very um, likely if you are a salesperson, that you will hear a no from somebody. No, I don't want to buy your product. I don't want to buy your service. No, I don't need it. Okay. Um, and you'll think, okay, I'll keep trying. And, and But you don't make the sale. You can look at that as a failure. Or you can look at that as the, a lesson to learn from. And so if you look at things as like a lesson to learn from, then you could have 100 failures and it doesn't make a difference. When I was in sales my first year, my uh, sales manager, the person, my supervisor, said that the more no's you get, it gets you closer to a yes. So that is something you will not find in your textbook or anywhere in your book, but that is something for me of being a salesperson. Think about that in your own lives. You, know, you can get a lot of no's, but eventually you'll get a yes. And that's called persistence. That's called being resilient. That's called picking yourself up. There is a Japanese philosophy. It says if you fall down six times, you pick yourself up seven times because that seven time is you're still standing. And so that's what this is about. It's about picking yourself up after a fall. All right. And in sales, you need to have thick skin if you want to be successful because you'll hear no an awful lot. All right. So I'm going to stop talking. And I'm going to open it up for somebody to share and, again, share a little bit about a fun fact, something you enjoy, something you're, you're proud of that you're doing, maybe where you're from, where you live right now, or you can share a high and a low from your day. So, so go ahead. You could see on the, the menu bar at the top, there's a microphone. You could hit that and unmute yourself. Um, and if you be so inclined and you want to share your screen, feel free to do that as well. Uh, let your camera uh, show as well. Okay. So let's hear from somebody. Great, Muhammad. Great. Thank you for starting us off. Yes. So uh, thank you very much, Todd or Prof. Todd. 
for your uh, uh, very nice presentation of uh, our course. Yani today I uh, I felt some difficulties in uh, logging into the Teams. It was some something related to the unacceptance of the password, which mm. uh, which was uh, sent to me earlier. Uh, but with the help of the admin team, they were succeeded to let me in. I would say ten minutes or fifteen minutes before our course. So it was very great. So this is one of the high things that I met today. <laughs> Yeah. While the low one, that was, I was struggling to look into it for one hour before uh, the time of the session. Uh, so. There you go. Thank yes. you for sharing, Mohammed. That's that's great. And think about this. A lot of times, again, it's perspective. We may be in a frustration. We may be in a sales situation that appears to be frustrating, but if we could stick with it, perhaps then it allows us to see a, a, a high, a possibility, something positive from it. That's the learning. Um, can we persevere? Can we push through that? So fantastic. Thank you for starting us off. All right. So who else would like to share just a little bit about it? It's good to get to know you a little bit, Mohammed. Thank you. Um, we'll, have, we'll have time for at least a couple more to share. Um, Elena, thank you. Hopefully I'm uh, pronouncing your name correctly. If not, please let me know. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, hello uh, Professor Todd. Uh, thank you for uh, the introduction. Uh, yes, my name is actually, it's very interesting because um, my name is originally Olena. I am from Ukraine. Okay. Uh, but in, um, like, I understand that uh, Usually, usually people call me, uh, for, uh, foreigners call me Olena or Olina. Uh, Currently, I stay uh, in France. Since July, I am in France. And mm. French people call me Olina. 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 So, okay. so I have different <laughs> names and they're all fine for me. Okay. But also, like, uh, my uh, family call me Yelena also and it is in English translation it's Elena so there are at least five names I have got that's so wow. fine okay. I'm actually a salesperson I consider myself ah. to be because I used to work in hospitality for more than 10 years I used to work in um, Vindam hotel chain it's hotels also like American roots they have American roots Sure. And then I used to work in European chain, uh, which is um, which is uh, Ancor, uh, also Mercury Kiev Congress. And currently I work in, uh, actually I work now in sales tech uh, consulting company. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. So that's, that's great experience. Olena, <laughs> Elena, so I can use the... Pretty much Olena. anything. Yeah, Olena. Olena. That's, that's great. Um, yes. I think that's that's terrific. And you can kind of see, you know, that is absolutely another field, right? Hospitality. So think about this. When we go to a hotel, there's so many possibilities. What could be sold there? The service to stay at a hotel. The service to have a sales meeting in a hotel, right? You could be selling your banquet room. Um, you're selling... Within the hotel, there's people that take care of the rooms. There may be people that make the meals. So maybe you have a restaurant there. So the service um, in the hospitality industry, you'll notice that within sales, there's many consulting opportunities in so many different fields. That's what the beauty is. So wonderful. Thank you so much. It's good to have you here today. Thank you. So... Anybody else like to share? Let's take time for, let's see, Ashraf. Up, oh, you still, you hit the uh, little microphone button because they're still on mute. Here, let me see if I can. No, it's okay, I think. Okay. Now okay. I think it's okay. Hello, everyone. Okay. Hello, Mr. Todd. Uh, Professor Todd, um, one of the high things actually that happened to me last week uh, that finally I could uh, have a vacation in my home country after three years of 
not being to travel because of the COVID. Mm. So just just last week, I could have a I could have a vacation, uh, and right now I'm uh, in a vacation in my home country after three years. So that's something was uh, uh, very good and uh, some uh, high thing that happened to me last week. While the low thing is that I got all my documents expired, I have to renew my civil ID, I have to renew my license, and actually it takes too much steps and uh, too much headache to make all of these documents after this long time of uh, uh, expiration. Yeah, I, I hear you anytime. And think about this, when we're in those settings, the people behind the desk, they have something we want, right? They want, we mm -hmm. want for them to renew whatever documents we have. So we need to obviously, in terms of kindness goes a long way, right? Patience goes a yeah. long way because it's not always easy to get what we want in a timely manner. That's probably exactly. really helpful yes. to know. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, well, great. Well, thank you. I'm glad that you had the yeah. chance for vacation as well. Um, thank you. I think so a lot of us were in the same uh, in, in the same boat of not to be able to travel for a long while. So it's good that the world has much more open. Um, yeah. I see, yeah. Okay. Okay. Samya, yeah. you, you're welcome. Thank you, Ashraf. Uh, Samya. Hello, Dr. Corbin. Hello, 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 Hello there. Um, uh, thank you so much for really, you know, it, it's really looking like a very good learning experience and learning platform for me. Um, as you, as you shared that um, so sometimes we sell stuff, we sometimes we sell products and sometimes we sell ourselves. I live here in Long Island, New York, um, and I work in IT as a business analyst. Um, and for me, it's mostly not really a product, but mostly myself as a as an IT business analyst, I sell myself. And recently I just had a had a a uh, good experience of selling myself with my um, my business manager. Um, since my since I usually work as a contractor, my contract gets to end, and I really have to um, get that information way in advance that when is my contract ending, and uh, I sometimes don't get that help from my parent company. Um, they just leave it on me that you have to deal with it. You find out for ourselves if you are still staying in the project or they're going to renew your contract, then we will intervene. Uh, so I schedule a meeting with our business manager um, last week and then I gave her all the good information what I have been doing in this project and why it's beneficial for them to keep me in the project. And looking at all that, she discussed with the higher management and then they gave me another four weeks, additional four weeks to stay. And not just that, she she said that we will see uh, exactly how that goes and that might then extend more. So this is how I sold myself and just wanted to share with everybody here. Yeah, thank you. And you can kind of see from everybody's experience in terms of th there's so many possibilities of what we're selling so many different kinds of services. Um, and I, I think from this, that standpoint, um, th this class, and you'll learn a lot from a lot of people here because that's what I want people to share and their experiences of how they're doing. You know, Alina said she sold in the hospitality uh, business. And I think, you know, whether you realize it or not, um, even if we're not in a sales profession, there are times where we do need to present ourselves in a little bit better manner. And so I think that's important to, to know. Okay, Samia, thank you. Thank yeah, you. and you're here on the same time zone as me because I'm in Ohio, so. Oh, you are in Ohio. And, okay. Yeah, yes, that's so that's good. Thank you so much. Yes, all right, so let's, let's take time for one more person to share if they'd like, that would be great. Otherwise, um, we'll move along with the additional uh, slides, so. Judalyn, hello oh. there. <laughs> hello there. Uh, I'm Judalyn Sabit. You can call me Judalyn. I'm working as a personal assistant in a restaurant. I'm originally from the Philippines. As you can sense my accent. 
And now I'm currently living here in British Columbia, Canada. So it is Pacific time here. So it's still quarter to nine. Got it. It's a little bit dark. Okay. Yeah. And maybe as you said that we are sailing ourselves. I love also traveling. Maybe that's how I sell myself in traveling. So I, because I love also travel, I like to enjoy different cultures. I'm fond of it, like their food, that, that's everything, their nature, how life uh, goes to another country. So I've been some uh, many countries like Muslims in Asia. And here in Canada, some, some in other provinces. And next week, maybe I'm traveling to Panama and I hope I can make it. And this is my third time on the NBA. Uh, so I think all of us, we know each other. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. And to the newcomers, I'm confident that you will gain wisdom from our energetic professors. Most of all, you won't regret it. To the newcomers, welcome to the club. To our professors, please bear with us. And current students, cheers from me. Best of luck to us. And professor, I'm what you said is about the books. I'm interested in that. I hope as your student, you can give discounts so that we can buy some <laughs> if it's possible. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, inst I'm in inst interested about your coaching, your training, and I want that. Good to hear. Thank you, Judalyn. And thank you for the warm welcome because you've, you've obviously have had other classes here before, but um, some really good advice, kind of think about that because if some of those people that we know each other already, or you're new, um, we're gonna get a lot of uh, out from each other. Um, absolutely, so that's, that's really great. But thank you, if you can make it for next week, wonderful. If not, we record them. So we'll, we'll see you in a couple of weeks then as you travel to Panama, okay? Yes, thank you, Prof. Okay, so I'm going to move back to the slide deck um, here. Let me get back to sharing. I think it's going to take a minute to load for some reason. It, um, so, you know, just to give you a little bit of, of um, here we go, as, as the presentation loads, um, I, I could do one thing right now before the, the PowerPoint comes back up. And that is, here, let me scroll through here. Okay, so just to give you a sense for the next class, all right, I talked a little bit about this already, but um, there was a question, where is the textbook? Uh, Mohammed had asked. Um, Sarah, if you're still on, you're listening. Uh, Mohammed needs access to the online book. Um, and so maybe we can get that information. I will post that in Moodle on the announcements about how to get access to the uh, textbook per se. Um, but I want you, everybody, to read chapter one. Um, it's about 20 pages, um, so it's not a very long book uh, chapter, but it's a really good introduction. It tells you a little bit about, again, what selling is, some things we talked about. It may be already um, familiar to you. It may be new. Um, and I will also post, um, yeah, so I have a message here from Sarah saying, and you can see it in the chat, Yes, we will provide textbooks for all soon. So I guess that's coming. Um, so terrific. Um, so when you get the book, read chapter one, I will, I will keep tabs on making sure that you actually have the books available um, to be able to read. Um, and you could always feel free to read a chapter ahead. Some weeks will actually have two chapters assigned because this course is only 14 weeks. And so I want to make sure that you know ahead of time. So um, 
I will always be a week ahead in Moodle. So you can kind of see what we're doing a week later. Say you go, um, you go into Panama on vacation like Judalyn, and you may not be able to get um, the course materials because you're out of town. Again, everything is online, um, but you'll know ahead of time, oh, I'm gonna be out of town that week. I can read ahead, I'll know that. So I'll always be at least one week ahead of you um, with assignments, with quizzes, all that. Um, that's kind of the way I like to do things. And I know there's always some students out there, because I was one of them, like to read ahead, like to um, do things ahead so I can catch up um, and then to kind of take a break if I need to. Um, so you can always read a chapter ahead or go to the f next week. Um, all right, so just kind of keep that in mind. But next week, there'll be a short quiz and there will be um, the assignment from just chapter one. All right, um, the assignments per se will be later um, in weeks three and four, we will have our first assignment. But I wanna get ourselves uh, learning a little bit about the selling process and some content. Um, even though there's some people that already have sales experience, um, I want everybody to have a, a baseline of information before we get into the assignments and do the role play, okay? And that is it for today. Um, again, shorter class because it is a um, orientation. I wanted to get to know some people. We got to know some people in the class. It's all good. But just a, a, however long I'll stay on as needed. Um, if people have questions, I think already people are putting information in the chat about um, where can I get the textbook? Sarah says that they'll be available uh, for you all soon. I'm sure she'll communicate that probably on the WhatsApp group or through your, um, your Windsor ID. Um, however, she communicates maybe through uh, Microsoft Teams um, or just direct email. Um, because I think nowadays it's funny because we have all these interfaces of how we communicate. Sometimes it's best to have a direct email sometimes. Um, okay, but uh, I will communicate mostly also through um, Microsoft Teams. I will make sure that I have the classes scheduled. I will invite everybody to be there. So that way you all have the, the link. And I will also post the link in WhatsApp again say you're traveling or you're somebody and you're like, well, what was the link? Um, so I'll post it in both places for you. Sometimes I even will post it in Moodle, um, depending on, you know, wherever I can get it. Um, I want to make sure that you're all available uh, to have it. So I'm going to open it up for anybody, any other questions about the class. Again, just know uh, for next week, hopefully you all have the, the textbook soon. Um, read chapter one. There'll be a short quiz about chapter one, um, and then we'll cover chapter one. Um, and if there's time, might even get into a little bit of chapter two. Um, chapter two is going, this is the, the following week, uh, week three. Um, chapter two is about the legal and ethical implications of selling. It's a shorter chapter. So we're we're going to have chapter two and three together for that third class. So that way we can kind of catch up in terms of the book uh, content. All right, so any questions um, about this course, um, about how to succeed in this course? I think you all have a really good handle on uh, what it takes to be, um, uh, to get what you need. I want you to get what you need out of this class. That's important. Yes, grades are important. Um, certainly, but more important to me um, is getting what you need. How do you become a better at selling you to whomever it is that you promote yourself? Um, and I'll bring in, like I said, a lot of my own personal experience that's not in the book. The book is a good one, actually, um, and it does have a lot of case studies in it. But I want, I want to hear from other people and what other people are using. And maybe Elena will talk about what's worked for her in the hospitality management area. Um, so we'll all have um, to, uh, opportunity to, sh to share. Okay, any questions from anybody? You can post something in the chat if you'd like. Um, 
And I'll just give everybody a couple minutes to kind of think about that, I'm getting a couple thumbs up. So maybe there's not a whole lot of questions. Um, so I will leave you with this, okay? So it's not a question, um, a thought, right? So again, let's see here. And let's see, Muhammad is saying he is, ah, there we go. So just to give you a sense, Muhammad, he is in a country, he's a service manager at Siemens um, in Egypt for the laboratory department. So obviously um, he has a lot of business experience, my goodness. And so you can share probably some of your wisdom with us in terms of, you know, part of selling too is that you're at a company. You're selling your project or what you're doing to another department to maybe get funding in your company or to your manager. And so I think part of that too is, you know, like I said, the breadth and the depth of how we can be selling and what we're selling and how we're creating all this. Um, that's why I love this course. I, I, I love teaching sales um, and selling skills. So there, there's some very basic things, but I want to talk about a lot of the practical things. Okay, so good. But I want to leave you with this, this thought. So like I said, the highs and lows, think about this for you. And what's the difference between a high and low? Think about this. I always say it's how you view things. Okay, how you view things. Um, and like some people shared at the very beginning, like Mohammed, when he shared at the very beginning, the particular thing he had that he dealt with, not being able to get on Microsoft Teams, was a frustration, was a low, but it also was a high because people were there to help him and he was appreciative and he was able to get onto the class. And so you can kind of see there's this progression. Again, part of sales is our ability to be able to be patient and allow ourselves to fail a little bit to be a little bit frustrated, but to give ourselves some space to then have the opportunity then to see the good stuff that when that does flow. So eventually it does if we stay with it. All right. So it's been a pleasure to be with you today. Um, and I think that, that, like I said, next Saturday, we will have the class on Saturday at the same time. And then I think some of the suggestions that people made are good ones. I will look at those in the chat. But what I think somebody suggested, which maybe makes sense because some people prefer Tuesdays, some people are okay with either, some people would rather have Saturdays. Um, I will have a reg somewhat regular schedule, but maybe we'll switch off. And so that way everybody can attend a lecture that is probably a little bit more uh, convenient for them. And on those times when it becomes Saturday is great, but I can't really do Tuesday or I can do Tuesday or can't really do Saturday as well. Um, you can watch it on recording. And again, that way it gives everybody an opportunity to be on. And there's only, you know, I know there's 21 people total in the class um, on live here. There's only like 10 or 11. So maybe that means that those other people that it can't be on, maybe Tuesday is better for them. Or, you know, perhaps, um, like I said, if we go Tuesday, we might do a little earlier. Um, which Samya, I know, I think you said you're on the West Coast Pacific time. So that might be a little early for you, but uh, we'll only have that every couple of weeks. Okay. So thanks so much, everyone. It was great to be with you. I look forward to being with you. Check the announcements in Moodle for any updates that I, that I need uh, to make. But uh, I will look forward to seeing you all at the same time um, on the same day next week. Okay, and I'll send along the link because it may change on Microsoft Teams sometimes when I uh, put a new date and it does. Okay, thank you. Have a great rest of the day, evening, morning, wherever you're at, and I will see everybody here next week. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye, bye everyone.